Hello, my name is Todd Rothman, and I want to welcome you back to Organic Chemistry 1. In this video, we're going to cover the Lewis acids and bases. Now, if you watch the Bronsted Lowry video first, then this video is going to be very easy for you to follow along with because most of what we're going to do here is review. Okay, so I, I encourage you to watch the Bronsted Lowry video first before you watch this video. And let's get started. So, the Lewis acid and base theory is all about focusing in our attention on the electrons. So we want to see where electrons are and where they're going. Okay? And so what we say is that a Lewis acid is something that accepts electrons. So it's something that needs electrons, so it's electron deficient. Whereas the Lewis base is the one that donates electrons to the acid. So a base donates electrons. Now remember that the Bronsted-Lowry theory and the Lewis acid theory, co they complement each other. Well, so what I mean by that is that whatever is considered a Bronsted-Lowry acid or base is also considered an acid or base for the Lewis definition. So that's what this first example is going to show us. Now, if we recall from our Bronsted-Lowry video, we have uh, HCl, which pKa is around negative 7. So here's the pKa. And water is around 16. So for sure, hydrochloric acid is the acid, right? So this is the acid, and this is the base. Now, if we think about it from either point of view, Lewis or Bronsted-Lowry, the water winds up picking up a proton, and the Cl winds up losing a proton. OK, now let's fill in our electrons. So water has two lone pairs to make eight electrons around it, or to have six that it owns, a valence number of six. And chlorine should have seven electrons around it. It owns one from the HCl bond, so it has three pairs to get to its seven that it owns, and eight that's around it to fill its outer shell. OK, now remember that when we look at an HCl, we could think of it in two different ways. We could think of it, number one, as if it broke apart first, it dissociates, and then water comes and grabs the proton. Or we could think of it as more of a simultaneous event where water is going to grab the proton while HCl takes the, uh, Cl takes the electrons away from H. That's the way that you could think. It's either way you want to think about it, but it's probably better for you to start thinking about it simultaneously. Okay, so because as we go on with organic chemistry, you'll see that this simultaneous thinking process is probably more likely of what's taking place. Because think about it, waters are, are around, HCl is bouncing around in the solution, it collides with the water, water hits the H, pulls it off, and Cl has gone. It takes the electrons and leaves. So collisions are making these reactions take place. I want you to think about it from that point of view. Okay, now let's think about a few things. First off, when you look at this HCl bond, remember this is a covalent bond, and what that means is that Cl owns only one electron in that bond, and H owns only one electron. So when Cl takes both electrons, it's actually taking not only its own electron away from H, but it's taking H's electron away from H. So at the end, this Cl is going to wind up having an extra electron. So it has eight electrons around it, but it only owned seven total of the eight. So that means it has an extra electron, and so it's negative, right? It has one extra negative, so it's negative. Now, oxygen, on the other hand, had the opposite event. Oxygen owns its lone pairs completely. Remember, atoms own both electrons if it's a lone pair. But when it makes a bond to hydrogen, when it makes this new covalent bond, it now lost one of its electrons because H now owns one of those two electrons. Whenever you see a covalent bond, each atom owns one electron, even if one atom had both of them to begin. You see? So what does that mean? That means that oxygen here is positive because it lost an electron. So it has more positive in the center now than it does negative on the outside, Okay, or the electrons on the outside. So there you have it. Now, this follows Bronsted-Lowry theory because we're moving a proton around. But it also follows Lewis acid base theory because we're giving electrons to someone and something is accepting them, right? And so 
we could see this as a Bronson Lowry or a Lewis definition. Okay, now remember I said that, and this is going back, everything here is review. If you notice, there's nothing new so far. And pretty much everything in this whole video is review. Okay, so not all Lewis acid base are going to be Bronson Lowry acid base. And here's an example of that. Now, if we go ahead and fill in our electrons, we have oxygen with two lone pairs, right? It's supposed to own six electrons to be neutral because that's its valence number. And so if it has two bonds, that means it owns two electrons, one from each bond, and then another two pairs would give it six. So now it's neutral. It's got eight electrons around it, and it owns six of those eight electrons. Okay, now boron is a group three element, right? So on the PR table, boron is a group three element. And remember, what that means is that boron, just like aluminum, those are the two most important ones that we're going to focus in on, boron and aluminum, they can only make three bonds because they only have in their valence shell three electrons, one for each bond, right? So they could make three bonds, but the, of course they would like to make a fourth bond. And that's why they're very good Lewis acids because even though they on their own cannot make a fourth bond, they're happy to accept electrons to make that fourth bond. So oxygen would give the electron pair to make that new covalent bond. And so now oxygen has a new bond to boron, which has, of course, its three fluorines attached to it. And now let's think about charges for a moment. Now, it's very easy for us to do the valence, uh, the formal charge. We could do the valence electrons minus electrons owned. However, let's do it in a conceptual way. Now, this oxygen owns both electrons. But once it makes a bond to the boron, and by the way, oxygen still has a lone pair. It didn't lose both lone pairs, right? So now it made a bond. It used one of its lone pairs to make a bond to boron. Once you make that covalent bond, then oxygen now only owns one of those two electrons. Boron owns the other one. So anytime you make a covalent bond, not an ionic bond. Ionic bonds, the atom still owns its electrons the oxygen or who, you know whoever it would be. But in the case of a covalent bond, each atom owns one electron, no matter how they came. So in the case of this example here, boron o didn't own an electron to make a covalent bond, but oxygen was willing to give up a, an electron to do that. So this oxygen went from being neutral over here, it's neutral, but now it lost an electron, so it's positive, right? That's the logic that's going on. Oxygen is positive because it lost an electron. So it has more protons now in the middle than electrons surrounding it. Okay, so what about boron? Boron was neutral. So here it's neutral, and all of a sudden it gets an extra electron. It gets an extra negative on its outer shell in its valence electrons, right? So that means that this boron is negative. Its net charge is a negative charge because it has an extra negative that's not countering the positive from its center, its nucleus. Okay, so there you have it. This is a Lewis base. This is Lewis. And this is a Lewis acid. Okay, but it's not a Bronsted Lowry because there's no proton being moved around. So this has nothing to do with Bronsted Lowry acid base theory, right? So here's an example of a Lewis acid base uh, concept or theory. All right, now one thing I want to point out is that when you're dealing with the term conjugate, that only applies to a molecule or two molecules that have a difference of one more or less H. But if there is no H difference, then there is no such thing as a conjugate. So these two, are, this reaction here doesn't have conjugates. Lewis acid base theory that's not following Bronsted Lowry acid base theory, you cannot consider things to have conjugates. So there is no such thing as a conjugate. So this is not considered a conjugate of our starting material, okay? That's not how we look at that. All right, now the last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the types of Lewis acids. So what type of Lewis acids? I'm going to go and write C next page so we can talk about it from here. So